DIY soap food. Now this was inspired by the ever trusted and um, famous Murphy's oil soap food. Um, I'm from South Africa. I couldn't find anything here. I couldn't taste it, but I was inspired by it nevertheless. So this soap, although I've made solid bosch and the original one was a liquid soap, this recipe or this soap surprised me in more than one way. I had a oh my tries moment as well. So, um, but even with that, this soap actually um, turned out very nice. I will show you the results of the soap, how it works at the end of this um, the video. But before we get to that, let me just show you how to make it. Okay, for this Murphy's wood oil uh, inspired soap, I'm going to use raw linseed oil. Now, this is not the food grade linseed oil. I decided I'm not going to use this expensive oil of mine in soap that I'm going to use to clean wood with. So I went to the hardware store. They just say this is for a, a slow drying natural oil for interior and exterior timber. So this is made for wood. And then the fragrance that I'm going to use is a woody fragrance. Um, I don't really like it in bath soap. So woody fragrance might be the perfect one to use for our wood cleaning soap. Now the original Murphy's oil soap. I already pre-measured everything. I've got my lye water here and very interesting yeah um, it's cooling down now and it's like it's got a waxiness to it. So I'm not sure I think it might be the stearic acid in my oil. Now I've heated it up. It is 47 degrees at the moment there and this one is 54. So both of them is below 50. I'm not really a big fan for the 10 degrees within watch one another kind of thinking. It's if you're working with much warmer oils, anything above 50 degrees Celsius, I would say yes, try to get them within the same temperature there. Um, because it's just to avoid um, generating volcanoes and so on. But overall, okay, glasses, mask. I've used that one already for my lye water and then just quickly get my gloves on here. Now, interesting, this Murphy's oil soap on original cleaner, that was started as a family business around 1910. So it was thinking of many, many, many moons ago. And um, it was just the information that I could gather around it. It was basically a vegetable oil potassium soap so it was basically liquid soap made from a vegetable oil now i couldn't really find which kind of vegetable oil it was so no idea there but this company oh this is already tracing it's going thick i don't think i'm going to even be even able to speak fast enough to tell you the history by the speed this stuff is tracing here. Yeah? Let's just to clean it. This is tracing, speed of light. We're not going to wait here until we grow old. Um, I'm not even going to really measure this. This is not going to be used for bath soap. So let's just add the fragrance oil as well. And stir this in. Okay, the reason why I decided not to make a liquid soap is um, we are contemplating to um, get a caravan, a nice comfy one, then sell everything and start to tour the land and see more of South Africa. I'm born here and I haven't seen nearly a quarter of the land already. And 
everybody in our household is actually working online and we can work from any place in the world. So that's the big idea why I decided to rather go for not the liquid soap but for a bar soap. Bar soap takes much less space. Um, uh, it's so storage is easy. I don't need to put it in glass or plastic or anything. So it's plastic free. I don't need to put my liquid soap in glass jars because that's very heavy. And also a bar soap, it's weight wise, it's much lighter. So that's the main thing why I decided on a bar soap. Yeah. Okay, it's not tracing that fast that I'm not going to be able to get it into the mold. So back to Murphy's oil soap. They started in around about in 1910 and family business in around about 1980. That's about 70 years of hard work. They established the, that as a national product and then 10 years later or 11 years later in 1991 the Murphy and Phoenix Corporation was sold to Colgate and Palm Olive in New York for a lovely 65 million dollars. So if you ever have a new idea on soap give it a try you'll never know if that is maybe the next best for seller or some awesome soap or something so I think this is why I try these kind of things that I've never tried before I couldn't really find much information on wood soap at all except for Murphy's oil advertising and so on so try things you might just be surprised for this when it's I added the lye water here I thought okay no video here it's gonna be one thick blob within two seconds and this is a little bit like butterscotch pudding it looks lovely so yeah now the ingredients change from the original Murphy's oil so definitely because um, these days what I could find on the ingredients where they used water fragrance and then sodium talate now sodium talate is at um, it's tall oil, tall oil. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. And then try sodium MGDA and then Laura Mydopropyl Dimethylamine. No idea what that is. So, yeah, that's the ingredients I've got in it today. Now, the interesting thing tall oil is a byproduct when they use soft wood and they pulp it for paper then it produces a yellow to a black liquid and it contains a lot of resins and fatty acids like linolenic, oleic and palmitic acid. Now, it's the same kinds of acids that is mainly in linseed oil. That is why I went for the linseed oil. And then linseed oil apparently was specifically, it's being used specifically to treat wood. So I think we're on the right track here for the right kind of oil okay it's actually quite workable still hey no problem I can actually scoop it easily um, let's see the temperature here the temperature 54 degrees so it's actually quite warm still I didn't really want to soak much cooler because if you cool it too much down this because of the 10% stearic acid in here Stearic acid um, makes stearic acid spots in soap if you work below 45 degrees Celsius. So I decided 50 is around about the right place to work here. But yeah, I've actually, this is nice. Okay, I tried to get tall oil. Now, it's, I could only find one supplier in South Africa that could supply me tall oil. And it was a a 600 rand for 500 milliliters. So it's about one rand per gram. 
so I just decided this stuff is freaking wool totally too expensive I'm not even going to experiment with it I'm just going to go for the linseed oil because as I said the fatty acids are very similar and then the coconut oil that I added was for a little bit more bubbly and the stearic acid is just to harden the soap a little bit and yeah I thought it's going to take forever to trace and to speed up the trace here yeah? so it worked awesomely so let's just see how it can come out I'm going to leave it for 24 hours to 48 hours Okay, righty, two weeks later. Now this is going to be a little bit different. I'm outside. I decided the best way to decide if soap is a good soap or not will be to actually test it and try to see if it's going to clean. So it's a little bit noisy here with all the birdsong and geese and everything around here. So I hope it's not going to be too noisy. But yeah, anyhow, I've got this drawer that I actually wanted to restore quite a long time ago. Never got around to it. Um, it's got all gunk on it and so on, so let's see if this is going to clean. So, I've got my little sponge here. Now, interesting, when I was making the soap, I made a mistake with my measurements. Ooh. Okay, I'm just going to use the spongy side first. It does foam nicely. It's a little bit too much water in here. Let's just squish half of that out. Um, what happened is um, I actually plan all of my stuff about two weeks ahead of time before I record it. And when I um, sort of developed the recipe, I decided to do a dual lye recipe. And when I was making it, I forgot about it. And I actually measured everything as sodium hydroxide and not um, potassium hydroxide as well. So I ended up with actually too much lie in my recipe or the original recipe now lucky for me oh it seems like this is working eh? this is just a sponge side not even rubbing it with the cool side yet so yeah i made a mistake and luckily for me it was the seven percent that i started the super fat with oh my goodness gracious i'm gonna interrupt myself quite a lot here <laughs> I'm impressed with the soap so um, when I had to recalculate it um, I realized that I actually only had two percent of um, a two percent super fat in it left over and I actually wanted the super fat to be able to sort of nourish the wood afterwards so yeah um, I will still do a video on to um, show you how to check if you make a mistake like this so for this one, luckily for me, it didn't turn out badly. It actually worked out quite well. Okay, let's call this a wrap. Wood soap is obviously cleaning wood. Um, leave me a, a comment and tell me if you're going to try it as well. So happy soaping. Until next time.